canción para mi gente Con una pasión Con una pasión tan fuerte This is my baby blue sweater, but this is my old transformer. This is the one that recently went thermonuclear meltdown and stopped to rest as prototype dead in its tracks. This work of art, on the other hand, is the rectification stage of the drive power supply. This actually has been working fine, but recent traumatic events have led me to reevaluate some of my life decisions. Before I get into the nitty gritty, let me tell you how I got to where I am. This stuff, the transformer and the rectifier stage, are from an old CNC plasma build I did long before YouTube was around. I broke the CNC plasma down years ago. It was a lot of fun, don't get me wrong. Sometimes I wish I still had it, but it was really just too dirty to keep around. And it ate a lot of metal. I saved all the old stuff and when the time came, dug it back up and repurposed it here for the router. Unfortunately, I don't remember why or how I made the decisions I did when I put this textbook example of modern electronics together. I like to think I did my research, chose the correct components, and built an adequate power supply. However, it's well within the realm of possibility that I just found all this junk in the trash. And since it worked for so long, I eventually ended up taking it for granted. This is a 48 volt transformer. Well, it was anyway. It took in line voltage and dropped it to 48 volts AC. It unfortunately has no labels, no ratings, no nothing really. When it burnt out, I assumed it was old or I cooked it from overuse or just plain old pushed it too hard. I have no idea. I just knew I needed another one. So back at square one, I sat down and redid the math I hope I did back when I put this junk together in the first place. And that led to quite the surprise. Now granted the power requirements of a CNC plasma cutter, generally speaking, aren't as high as, you know, for a router. CNC plasma sees no real cutting load. It just needs to be able to move and accelerate its own weight. Anyway, I thought this whole discussion could be of general interest, so we'll talk through it together. Not rocket surgery, but let's start at the top. My router uses stepper motors, three of them, one for each axis, X, Y, and Z. Not this stepper motor exactly, but this will do for our little video here. They are six amp steppers on the machine, and I drive them with gecko drives. These are older 210s, I believe. G210 stepper drive. Now, stepper drives require either a third or two-third of the motor current to properly drive the motors, depending on how they're wired. In my case, two-thirds of the motor current brings a six amp motor down to a four amp rating, or a four amp requirement. As I said, I have three motors and three drives. That makes the total current requirement of my power supply a nice round 12 amps. Okay, so we know the current requirement. In my case, it's 12 amps total just for the drive system. One down, one to go. Next, we need to figure out the voltage. Now, voltage is a little bit tricky, but there's a formula that goes a little something like this. And a one. And 32 times the square root of the inductance of your motor. You'll have to check the spec sheet for your particular stepper, but in my case, the inductance of my motors is 2.7 millihenries. Okay, so we have the inductance of the motor and the little formula. You go ahead and do the math. I'll wait. about 53 volts DC. So for this system to work properly, I need to provide the three drives with 12 amps at 53 volts. As you likely already know, the transformer brings down line voltage from your wall, and in this case to 48 volts AC. Now that's still AC. It's lower than what's coming out of the wall, but still AC. To turn that AC to DC, we need a rectifier. This is a bridge rectifier has four big diodes in it and a teaspoon of magic packed into this little block. It has four terminals. Two take the AC input from the transformer and the other two output the DC. The DC output isn't spectacular though. It's a little lumpy, following the changes in the AC voltage on the input of the transformer. In this case, I think it's double the frequency since it's flipping over all the reverse current up into forward current. So instead of having a sine wave that alternates direction, we get sort of a fast chain of bumps. It's technically not AC anymore, but it won't be taking home any blue ribbons. To average that ripple out, the new DC with the crooked smile here is run through a capacitor bank. Think of a capacitor bank like a big bucket with a hose filling it in fits and starts. Non-constant water input into the bucket. But the output, say a hole in the bottom of said bucket, would give a nice constant flow. It's sort of averaging out the flow of electricity. The bucket, or in my case I preferred to use capacitors, is filtering the output from the bridge rectifier. 
cleaning it up. When you rectify voltage this way, transformer, bridge rectifier, and capacitor bank, you end up with an increase in output voltage, 40% in fact. So the 48 volt AC that the transformer is putting out is now 67 volts after the conversion, 67 volts DC. Now, if I did my math right, 67 volts is higher than the required voltage we needed. Remember, V max in the little equation should be 53 volts. So I'm no civil engineer, but you know, 53, 67, doesn't seem like that big of a difference. And these gecko drives can take up to an 80 volt DC input. It says it right there, 24 to 80. So should I put something in here to knock some of that voltage back? Am I doing some sort of slow, irreversible damage to my drives or motors? I don't know, to be honest. But fact of the matter is these drives have been running fine for over 10 years, probably. First in the plasma table, now in the CNC router. If anyone knows different, I'd love to hear about it. While we're here, I'll mention that to size the capacitor bank, there's also a handy little formula. Capacitance is 80,000 times the current divided by the voltage. In my case, that works out to 14 or 15,000 microfarads. My old capacitor bank used four times 2200 microfarad caps for a total of 8,800 microfarads, using caps rated to 63 volts. It worked, but it's not ideal. Again, the output is 67, and technically we need more capacitance than this, more capacity in the filter bank. My new capacitor is 27,000 microfarads and good to 100 volts. A little overkill maybe, but going bigger hopefully doesn't hurt. Oh, and I'm not completely sure if in this case it's better to have a lot of smaller capacitors or one gigantic one, but this is the one I found. So you may have been taught that knowledge is power. Well, it's not. Current times voltage is. In my case, 12 amps times 67 volts is about 800 watts. And since I never want to deal with this problem again, I doubled that number. I ordered a transformer good to 1500 watts. And this monster showed up at my door. My wife screamed, my children cried, but this is what I got. I guess I should have checked the physical dimensions. FYI, a picture of a transformer with nothing else in the frame can potentially be misleading. But that's fine. I mean, I had no idea what to expect. Other than the fact that it doesn't physically fit in my enclosure, oversized is probably better than undersized. And while I was wiring in that comedy-sized transformer, it dawned on me that its screw terminals are larger and probably more powerful than my bench vise. It maybe started to put some of this stuff into perspective, meaning my original transformer had puny little lines. I mean, how did this thing survive for as long as it did? Granted, I was pulling 800 watts and not 1500 watts, but still. Which finally brings us to today's video. I have the new transformer, and although it, the old rectification stage seemed to work, I mean, it built all of Duresta's prototype, I'd like to rebuild it using some more legit connections, components that I know are better sized to my power requirements, and use some decent gauge wire so the other kids aren't laughing at me. Relatively straightforward, I think. I just want to build a support that holds both the capacitor and this bridge rectifier. I think I'm going to put this on some aluminum. This is technically a 50 amp rectifier, and I'm only dealing with 12 amps. You know, 800 watts, it's not really a ton of watts. It's like 0.6% of a ton of The other bridge rectifier, which is also rated higher than what the system needs, I think that's a 25 amp, 50 volts, something like that. When I was poking around with the thermal camera, I noticed that thing getting pretty toasty too. So I've got this one. It's a little bit higher rating and I think I'm going to mount it on a makeshift heat sink right behind kind of the main fan of the enclosure. The capacitor will just sort of float there maybe in that same mounting plate and I can run these wires.
Sorry about that. Not only was that fun to make, completely gratuitous. All right, well, I think this should be it. I'm not sure why, but the word unconventional comes to mind. I'm trying to pack this into a tight space. The capacitor is isolated from the aluminum support, and I don't expect this to really generate enough heat to cause any problems. Again, it's gonna be right behind the main fan. I've got two tapped holes in the top, and this will also connect to the heavy metal casework of the enclosure, hopefully also sinking some heat. I guess I should try it out. All right, so I don't know if you could see it hanging from the roof of the enclosure back there. I haven't tied it to the motor drives yet. I just wanted to do a little sanity check. I was expecting 67, we got 67. I'm happy with that. Since we're getting all up close and personal here, what you saw me build till now was an unregulated power supply. The ones that you're looking at, however, are regulated power supplies and are completely independent. There's a five volt, a 12 volt and a 24 volt. These power everything else, everything except the stepper drives and motors. They power the breakout and motion controller boards, the relays and solenoids that start and stop the spindle, air and coolant, the lights, that sort of thing. Again, not a civil engineer, but from what I understand, when stepper motors decelerate, like when they're coming to a stop or changing directions, they can send surges back to the drives and power supply. An unregulated power supply can handle those surges, where a regulated power supply could cause problems. They may have protection circuitry that could cut the drive out when a surge occurs, leaving you dead in the water, potentially in the middle of machining something. This is a piece of stone cold rolled steel. And today, today is a day of reckoning. I fully expect to break the end mill, stall the machine, burn up my spindle, all of the above, or I don't know what. I've never pushed my machine this hard. That's a quarter inch end mill, two flute, carbide, that I'm about to send 3 16 of an inch deep into that cold rolled steel at 10 inches per minute. If all goes well, first it'll do an adaptive roughing pass with an 80 thou step over, followed up by a finishing pass that cleans up 20 thou off the walls. <laughs> All right then, next time we'll push it harder.